Hi everybody, Michelle Kunz here. The topic for today is cardiac arrest algorithms. Now in October and November of 2010, American Heart Association came out with new guidelines. So you might have seen my other videos that talk about V-fib and PEA and asystole. I just want to review them with you one more time, make sure we have the changes that we need to know. They've actually simplified cardiac arrest algorithms. They say they wanted to look more like the pediatric algorithms, which are actually simpler. So um, let's start by talking about cardiac arrest. We know that we have a team that's doing high quality CPR and that CPR today is at least 100 compressions per minute, compressing in between the chest at um, depth of two inches deep. So it is really fast and hard CPR and recoil coming all the way back up is very important. And we know that um, adults have 10 minutes worth of oxygen in their bloodstream where they're now saying, you know, that instead of ABC, it's CAB. So that circulation is so important that we should do that high quality CPR and hopefully as soon as the team comes into the room or an EMS, you know, enters the area, if it's, we're outside the hospital, we could start our 30 to 2 right away and outside the hospital EMS we could start you know, they're oxygenating and intubating patients. So we're going to start compressions right away, oxygenate the patient as soon as possible. We're doing high quality CPR and then we need to treat the patient's rhythm in regards to the algorithm. Now if you have the ECC book on page 6, the cardiac arrest algorithms talk about V-fib, V-tac, no pulse, and it also talks about a asystole and PEA. So asystole you know is flatline. PEA is pulseless electrical activity. So it's a rhythm without a pulse. And V-fib is a very chaotic picture. So let's talk about V-fib. We'll see the picture and we'll treat it. We're doing high quality CPR and the drug of choice in V-fib is epinephrine. It is one milligram every three to five minutes, no max. Anytime we give an adult epinephrine, we're going to get ready to give vasopressin. Now vasopressin comes right now in 20 unit little bottles, so we have to get two of them because the dose is 40 units IV push. And vasopressin is only recommended one time only. So far there's no benefit in repeating it. So we're going to give epi and we're going to get ready to give vasopressin. But in between those two drugs, we need an antiarrhythmic. Our favorite antiarrhythmic right now is amiodarone, and in the pulseless patient, we give 300 milligrams IV push. So we're doing high quality CPR, epinephrine, which is every three to five minutes, so that's one milligram of epinephrine. We're going to give an amiodarone 300 IV push, and replace that second epi, which is in three to five minutes, with a vasopressin. One time only, 40 units. Epinephrine can be repeated every three to five minutes, and that is the V-fib algorithm. Epi, amiodarone, vasopressin. If uh, it was suggested on the monitor that we sort torsades to point, magnesium could be added in. So we're treating the patient according to their rhythm. If their rhythm were to turn to asystole or PEA, or we found them in asystole or PEA, Certainly it's not a good sign, but the treatments for PEA and asystole are the same. High quality CPR, epinephrine, one milligram of the one to 10,000 solution, every three to five minutes, no max, and a dose of vasopressin, 40 units. So I just say epi, 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 and a dose of vasopressin. And in PEA and asystole, as well as in ventricular fibrillation, we are trying really hard to treat any underlying cause of death because that's what might ensue. So epinephrine is the drug of choice for a PEA and asystole. Add a vasopressin in and try to treat the underlying cause of death. So that was V-fib, VTAC, no pulse, 
and PEA and a systole treatment with high quality CPR. So I hope that was a good review of the changes for those rhythms. Thank you for spending time with me. Hope you take a look at the other videos and I hope you have seen my new newsletter. You might want to sign up for that. So thank you very much. See you soon.